you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We've got notes this time. Well, welcome on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday morning here at Grace Church in Port Macquarie. My name is Randolph. They call me Randy for short. I don't mind either one. But uh, I'd just like to welcome all the people of God and the visitors that have come, come to this church today. And maybe you're a first timer. And maybe you're the first time in a church today. And you might expect, well, what do I expect if I'm the first time in a church? What would I expect to hear? Well, let me tell you this. You'll hear the gospel truth. You'll hear about the greatest love story ever told. And you'll see and witness the power of the love of God in your own life. Amen. That's what's happened to me when I walked into a church many years ago, and I saw that. But I'd like to start something that uh, happened to me this week. And it, um, it started on Tuesday morning in the prayer meeting. It was 5 to 10. And the Lord gave me this vision. I didn't have time to share it in the prayer meeting. And it stuck with me the whole day. I was invited on Tuesday night to Shirley's place. Uh, Ruth makes this incredible apple crumble. I mean, you have to repent when you ever eat this thing. I mean, it's amazing. You just can't have one portion. Isn't that right, Ken? And <clears throat> I shared this story about this vision. And there was a lot of uh, interaction with this. Then I was fasting and praying for two days this week, and I was up in prayer in Eagle Heights there with John and Annette, and I shared it with them. I shared it with my wife. And it seemed to have confirmed everything of what the Lord was telling me. And I want to share this with you this morning because I believe it's very prevalent for this church and for the, I'm talking about the church, the people. The church is the people, God's saints. And the vision was that I saw a whirlwind. And this whirlwind was picking up momentum constantly. And in this whirlwind, this whirlwind was stealing things. It was stealing joy, it was stealing peace, it was stealing health, it was stealing finances, it was stealing relationships. It was stealing all these things. And this world would become stronger and stronger and stronger. And I sort of didn't understand about it all until I said, Lord, what does all this mean? And the Lord said to me, come into the centre of the whirlwind. And the Lord directed me into the centre of the whirlwind. And you know they say they call it the eye of the storm. There's absolute peace in this storm. And as I look up in this whirlwind, I see Jesus in this beautiful long robe. And his robe was not even fluttered, fluttering by the wind. It was just perfectly still. And as I looked up, I realized one thing. Jesus was the center of it all. And as I had my eyes on him, there was total peace. And I thought to myself, well, what does all this really mean? Is that uh, there's this whirlwind. And what is it doing to the people of God? And the Lord said to me, it's causing fear, doubt and confusion in the church. And I said, well, Lord, what's the way out of this? How does this stop? And the Lord said to me this. He said, if you have, my, if you have your eyes constantly on me, focus on me, the centre of all your problems in your life, I will lead you out. Then he said, I'll give you a supernatural sign that will be a sign from me that will lead you out. And as it will lead you out, you'll be in my perfect timing. And as you'll be in my perfect timing, you'll be in my perfect will because you'll be in perfect peace. And it started to put all these pictures together for me. And then God said to me, I'll set my perfect timing in motion. And God will move us into the next chapter. And I thought I'd share with that to you this morning because I truly believe there's a new chapter in a lot of your lives this morning. There is a lot of doubt, fear and confusion in your life. There's a whirlwind blowing. But this was the most beautiful part about this vision as I was praying and seeking the Lord about it. When the whirlwind stopped, everything was laid down in perfect and divine order. I mean perfect and divine order. A tornado doesn't do that. A whirlwind doesn't do that. It leaves a mess. Our God is a God who can turn a mess into a miracle. Yeah. So in the midst of your whirlwind, realize that when you're focusing on Him, that peace will come and that divine order will come yeah. in your life. Yeah. And I believe this is a rainbow word or a revelation for
to some of you that you're going through some things in your life and you think, I don't understand it. Guess what? He does. Your job is just to believe. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I had just a word when I was went through praise and worship. There was somebody who's they've gone to the doctors three weeks ago and the report wasn't good. You expected a different report than what you expect. Who's that person? Three weeks ago, somebody went to the doctors and had a report. Who's that person? Did you? Okay, good. Praise God. Thank you. Well, I have a word to you. The first report is not the last report. God's good report is that He's healing in your body right this moment. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I declare resurrection life, every organ, cell and system of your body to function the way it should function in Jesus' name. And for the resurrection power of the life to emanate of your body, that you now being healed and lay hands on others to be healed in Jesus' name. You receive that, you believe that, and it's yours today in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I believe you had a toe. I, I, I remember I had a word for you. For, was it you? Was it you? Somebody, or no, was it? Or somebody over there, I forget who it was. They had toe, I, red, uh, right toe or something. They said to me, God instantly healed her on the spot. She said, I'm totally healed from that. So I just want to encourage you in your, your faith this morning that if God will do what he promised to do, he'll always do it. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Anyway, I'm going to get into the message. I've got plenty of time. I feel good about that. I said I'll finish at 11 o'clock. But there's always grace. <laughs> I'm in grace church. <laughs> I'll finish it anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sent me an SMS last night. How are you going to finish at 11? I already to be back at AM or PM. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful you have a wonderful pastor? Yes. Amen. Amen. And it's a real privilege to serve, and, and to serve you here this morning because I feel so part of this church. And to be sad when I'm going to leave, it's like, you know, I'm going, leaving one family, going back to my other family. But praise the Lord. Anyway, I just want to recapitulate on what has been said in the last week, or rather Friday's message, that we heard about a 750 year prophecy about Christ about his suffering, his betrayal, his denial, his crucifixion. And what does it mean to us? Let me tell you something. When the blood was shed for us and was presented to the Father, it was a done deal. You know, when you look at that Greek word, testolestai, which means it is finished, if you really look it up, it really means totally completed, perfected, never to be done again, absolutely nothing to be added to it. Yeah. Mm. When Jesus paid that price on the cross, it was for our sins, and it was a one-time and all-time deal. Yeah. That is the beautiful part about it. Yeah. Not like in the Old Testament, where there was many sacrifices, and it was only a covering of sins for the next year to come. Mm. Jesus paid one time for all time, for eternity, past, present, and our future sins. Yeah. Doesn't give us the right to sin, doesn't give us a license to sin, God forbid. No, it just says that there's grace being given to us through this new covenant. And this new covenant, Jesus was the mediator of this new covenant with better promises. Now, I've always asked myself, here's three things that I've learned. You can have in life good, better, and the best. You can make a choice. I've always chosen to have the better things in life, the best things in life. And it's like the choice when people say, what would you rather have, quality or quantity? I'd rather have both. <laughs> Why not? I mean, think about it. I mean, I can have quality and quantity. God gave us the best. And here's the other question. Why did he do it for us? We, we heard that scripture from Romans 5.8, you know, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When he was on that cross, the nails didn't hold him on that cross. Hmm. The love of the Father through His Son held Him on that cross mm -hmm. to pay for man's debt. Thank and you, guess Lord. what? It's paid for. Yeah. Thank you, in full. Praise yeah. God. Never ever to be paid again. Yeah. 
Amen? So that's the difference between this New and Old Testament and this New Testament. One was a perfect, one was a sacrifice of many, and one in this New Testament sacrificed one time. I'm going to share a story that um, happened uh, many years ago in the Czech Republic. A uh, Christian team, uh, and it was only maybe a few films they ever did. And I was at that time promoting the Jesus film in the Czech Republic. We did a lot of traveling through all the cinemas and promoting the Jesus film. And then a Christian group came up with this film. It's called Most, M-O-S-T, which meaning bridge in Czech. And it's a story of about a, a man who was on a railway, working on the railroad track. I don't know exactly what they call him, but they're standing like a watchtower and they, do the, they change the, the track signals or the, 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 the track settings. And he brought his boy over to the to work that day. And uh, all of a sudden he was engrossed in his work and he saw his little boy caught on the tracks up, up on, the, on the bridge there. And he was suddenly distressed because he knew there was two trains coming on, uh, on from opposite sides. And where he was caught on the tracks, he had to make a decision whether he was going to push that leader for both trains to go opposite directions or they're going to have a head-on collision and cause many to die. This man, this father, had to make a choice to pull that lever to the trains to go opposite tracks and on one of them was where his son was get caught and he didn't have time to go out to save his son. Isn't it a beautiful picture of what the father did for us? This man only had one son and so did God the father had only had one son and he had to sacrifice him for us. I just want you to think of that, to remember. Can you please put up that slide? <clears throat> remember me. Um, I have a message that is probably kind of probably different than you've ever heard for, for a Resurrection Sunday because I was praying about it and the Lord said to me, when Christ rose, we rose. That's what the Bible says. Um, if you don't understand Romans chapter 6 and verse 3 and 5 is talking about who we are and what we've received by Him, that we have this newness of life because of his resurrection, then we've sort of like missed a few things. So I want to get you back in that this morning, and I think there's something at the end of this service that will be very powerful for us all. But let's first go into scripture, and I'll have a word of prayer. And Father, we thank you and we love you so much. We thank you for this written word. We thank you, Father God, it says all that we have in you. And Father, we're asking you right now to be led by your spirit right now today. For our ears to be open, our hearts to be open to receive from you this morning. Father, we thank you that you sent your son. We thank you, Father God, that your divine rescue plan was put in place for him to die for us, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And through this newness of life, we have this newness of life living inside of us. And we give you the glory and the praise for it. In Jesus' name. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And quite profound because um, in this, in this uh, scripture here, it really says that what this resurrection means and the benefits of this resurrection is for us. And if we go to, to verse 12, it says, now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? The Sadducees was a, was a sect in the, in the, in the uh, early church even that they didn't believe in the resurrection. And it says here, that there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. If Christ did not raise from the, was not raised from the dead, our faith would be like any other religion of this world. Buddha's in the grave, Confucius is in the grave, Muhammad's in the grave. But there's one man who rose from the dead, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that just good news to know that our faith is not in vain? Yeah. Because he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he lives. Yeah. I serve the living God. He's the God of the living, not the dead. The God you serve is alive today. The God that you serve is the one who wants to fulfill every need in your life. He's the God who says, I can hear from heaven and I'll answer you. He's God who's so real to me than the, than, than the tangible things of this earth. And when I have my quiet time with God, He is more real to me than I can see somebody physically. 
because he emanates his love, his presence, his goodness, his kindness, his peace towards me. And I don't get that from humans. I'll be honest with you, I don't. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about a different level of love. I'm not talking about, we receive human love, we receive that storge and Attila's love. But I'm talking about an agape, an agape style of love, an unconditional love. And in verse 14 it says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith is in vain. And it is certainly not. We are even found to be the mis misrepresenting God, because we testified about God, that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, because it is true that the dead are not raised. That sort of <coughs> confirms about what we just said. He, did, he was risen from the dead. For if the dead are not raised, even not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. The crucifixion was so important. The burial was so important. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But what was the, the primary focus? Christ rose to a in a glorified body that he could give us a newness of life. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You know, I believe in the mind of God when Jesus was on that cross, when he died, we died. When he was buried, we were buried. When he rose, we rose. That's very symbolic of the, the Christian faith, the born again experience, isn't it? The old is gone, the new has come. What's that? 2 Corinthians five seventeen. All things have passed away. All things are new. We now are a new creature in Christ. Christ. So where are you? In Christ. Where's Christ? Is he alive? Yes. Are you alive? Yes. Are you spiritually alive? Yes. Were you spiritually dead one time? Yes. And there you go. So we can see that there was there was this sequence of events that happened for things to to make us alive in him. Then those who have fallen asleep, who have died in Christ, have perished. If in Christ we have hope, in this life only, we are all people to be most pitied. Now, I thought of that, and I thought, now, that sort of like didn't sit with me well, because I thought, well, we had to enjoy our life. Jesus said, Jesus said John 10, 10, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. But I can tell you this. In comparison to our 70, 80, 90, 100 years on this earth, what does that compare to eternity with Jesus? Amen. Think about that. It, it, our life is futile. It's pitiful. In comparison to what we're going to walk into this eternal glory. Could you imagine this? It says in, um, in Philippians 3, 20 and 21, it says, For we are citizens of heaven, awaiting our Lord Jesus Christ. So he will change our lowly bodies, our mortal bodies, into immortal bodies. You and I one day will have an immortal body. We'll be transformed with this beautiful, glorified body that Jesus had and live with him forever and ever in an eternal place of glory. That's a, that's a blessed hope. I look forward to that day. And you and I have to be thankful and grateful for what Jesus did to, for us to obtain that. It was the cross and his resurrection. Amen? Amen. Let me finish with verse 32. And it says, For as Adam, for as any Adam all died, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. I thought of this. All of us were born sinners. If you don't teach a baby to sin, right? We all inherited Adamic, Satanic, evil, sinful nature when we were born. Jesus gave us then back a divine nature because we were spiritually dead. He could have only done that and given that to us because He rose. Yeah. He rose, we rose. And that makes to me a lot of sense. And I thought of this story when I wrote Remember Me in Luke 23, and this is quite amazing, you, you've got to just get the revelation of this, and I hope I'm going to, you'll get this today from me. In Luke 23, 39 to 43, I'll just skip through it a little bit, two men on a cross next to Jesus. 
And he's only going to find two people in this world. The ones who's going to reject and the one who's going to believe. Yeah. Think about this. The one who rejected, he's already condemned. Do you know that that is the greatest sin? The rejection of Christ? We talk about John 3.16. Well, read verse 17 and 18. It says they're already condemned because they did not believe. That there was a man next to Jesus. And listen to this. This man that was sitting next, to, uh, being hung on a cross next to Jesus, he says to him, you're a righteous man, you're a good man. But he says, remember me when you come into your father's kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Truly, this day you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't say the kingdom of God. I'll just quickly explain what paradise means. In Luke chapter 16, there was a story of a rich man and a poor man. One went to, to Hades, which is Sheol, which is hell. The other one went to paradise. It was a holding place for all the Old Testament saints. Nobody went to heaven unless the, unless the blood was presented to the Father from Jesus' sacrifice. So they're all in this holding place. That's why Jesus went into paradise. Remember in, in um, um, Matthew chapter 12, he says, Jonah was three days in the, in the belly of the great fish, three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Why is that? Jesus went down to paradise to preach. He set the captives free. So then they, once the, father was, the blood was presented to the Father, those Old Testament saints could now go into heaven. Nobody was in heaven prior to that. They were in paradise. Beautiful part about it is the blood has been shed, it's been presented to the Father. Guess where we go? No paradise, no holding place. We go straight to the Father. And he's saying to remember me. So this is the beautiful part about the gospel. He's saying, remember me. Listen to this. This is what I'm trying to say. This man knew, this criminal this criminal knew that he would rise again. While the disciples were trying to think out, was it, what did he really say? I'm really trying to work it all out. They were confused. Nobody saw Sunday morning. This man on the cross, this criminal, saw Sunday morning. It is beautiful. And did Jesus come down from the cross, wash his feet, baptize him, preach to him, lay hands on him with the Holy Spirit and all that? No. Did the man have to go out and do some good work before he got saved? No. Or he said, he said, believe in me. That's all that Christianity is. is a matter of just you putting your faith in the right thing, Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. Amen. And in his resurrection. That's all the gospel. It's making it so simple. We make it so difficult for people. So it's a simple conversion. Remember me. And now Jesus is speaking to us. Remember me. That's what Jesus is speaking to the world today. Remember me of what I did for you. I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you actually a story. I'll tell you a testimony. It was the 11th of November 2004. I was in my prayer closet at about 6.30 in the morning and the Lord said to me, take your Bible and go to the hospital. My Bible went to, my, to the hospital. My father was in hospital at that time. And uh, he, was, he was okay when I got there, uh, so to speak. Uh, I said, how do you think? He said, he had a horrible night. And then the Spirit of the Lord descended upon me. And my, the Lord told me that day for me to visit my father because I won't see him again. And I thought he, he, he battled so many things in life. So many times he, he would have died. But this time... It was different in the spirit than in the natural. It looked good. I looked into my father's eyes, and just with love and tears in my eyes, I told him that God loves you. God's seen every sin that you've committed, and God wants to forgive you of your sins. And I'm just going to have a short prayer. And we prayed this very short prayer together. And he held my hand and he said, "I believe." And then this was about, this was now around, say, 7.30 in the morning. And my wife came in around 9 o'clock. And she was with my father. And he was doing pretty okay. And my wife was just there singing hymns. And all of a sudden, there was this spiral that happened. Two hours later, he died. Just like that. It was like the man on the cross. You see, I'm going to see my father again. I believe that he's gone into a place where he remembered the things that I spoke to him about prior, about my faith, that he knew that my Lord is risen. My Lord's a good God. My God's going to bring me to his kingdom. So I just want to share that with you, that when we die, 
The Bible says man's appointed once to die and then judgment. There's not a judgment for the Christian. I know it says in Romans 14, 10, it says we're all standing before the judgment seat of Christ. But what I'm trying to say is it's a different judgment. We're not being judged for our sins. We'll be judged for our good works and our deeds, our motives, our thoughts and everything else that will stand before the Lord. But I wanted to say this to you. Because of our risen Lord, that He's now taken our place and that He's alive, we'll be alive with Him forevermore. Praise God. That is a beautiful picture of what the gospel preaches. Yeah. That's why the gospel is a gospel truth. Amen? Amen? I'll tell you what happened when Christ died. Well, here's the question. What happened when Christ died? I'll tell you what happened when Christ died. There was a divine exchange mm-hmm. for the whomsoever would believe. Mm-hmm. Everything that he had, he gave to us. Praise God. He would have given us nothing if he didn't rise from the dead. Absolutely nothing. He would have been, he would have been crucified like any other criminal. And actually, it was not an execution, it was, a, it was a sacrifice. But I'm just saying that if he just died and he didn't rise from the dead, our faith would be futile. That yours and my faith is not futile. We can walk out this door this morning just knowing that he is with us. And whatever happens to us today or tomorrow or the next week or the years ahead, we shall be with the Lord forever. Praise God. Yeah. Romans 6, chapter, uh, verses 3 and 5 declares that we've been baptized in Christ. Actually, that's the first baptism you'll ever receive when you became born again. There's three baptisms. Baptism into Christ, baptism of the water, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism into Christ means that we are one with Him. Then it says we died with Him. When Christ died, you died to yourself. The old man died in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The only good thing that Christians know how to do, they know how to resurrect the old man at times. <laughs> you know, we say, resurrect the dead. Yeah, well, I'll resurrect my old man first bad choice. Then we were buried with him. You know what buried means? It means that it's buried, dead and gone without sight. But guess what? It says he he raised us up to this newness of life. You know why this newness of life? Because your greatest enemy is not the devil, it's you. He had to change you, he had to get you on the right right path to say, hey listen, you can't do that anymore. I, I paid a price for you. And I'm with you forevermore. Isn't that good when Jesus said, I'll be with you forevermore? How can he be with you forevermore if he was dead? Does Allah say that? Does the, does the Hindu say that? Does Confucius say that? Does the Muslim say that? They can't say that. We're the only faith in this world that can say, we have a risen Lord. We're the only faith that we can say we've had forgiveness. We're the only faith that we said that somebody took our place for the, for, for the redemption of our sins. Praise God. Isn't that good news? Yeah. And here's the point I want to get to today. Maybe you need a resurrection in your life. Maybe there's something dead in your life. Maybe it's a marriage, it's a relationship, it's your finances, it's your health, it's a bad habit. It's something in your life that's dead. Do you know when, G- when, when Lazarus was in the grave, Martha's brother was lying in that grave, grave Lazarus. And guess what? She says to Jesus, I know, Lord, you'll raise him up on the last day. What did Jesus say? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Guess what? There's some things that in your life are dead. And guess what happens when things are dead? They smell. They've got grave clothes on. You're buried. And there's a stone in front of you. And you don't see no way out. But guess what? This is the good news. Jesus is saying to us today, I'll bring a resurrection in your life. I'll bring a resurrection back in your life again. In your marriage, with your kids, with your finances, with your relationships, with your health. Whatever you need, God is the God who can raise things from the dead. He can call, things of, he can call the things which is not as though they were. That's the God. That's why he rose. That we may have life. Because his resurrection was our resurrection. In every area of our life. And guess what happens? When there's something dead, that means there's no life. And maybe you've been struggling with some areas in your life that says, actually, I can see there's no life in this area of my life. I'm struggling. God, help me. 
And Jesus wants to hear this heart's cry to him and saying, Lord, help me. I need your help. Now, if we know that one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible is Romans 8, 11. He says, is that there's a same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That same spirit that dwells in us. He'll raise us up our mortal bodies. He'll raise us up above and beyond anything that we can ask, think or imagine in our lives. And I just want you to ponder right this morning. What do you need resurrected in your life today? Is it a new beginning? Is it coming back closer to God? Has there been complacency in your life? Has your prayer life sort of like dwindled away? Have you sort of like drifted off into the, with, with, amongst the theories, thinking to yourself, you know, I'll come to church, I'll have one foot in the world, one foot in the church, and I think I'll be okay. No, you won't be. I can tell you that right now. True. You're either going to love and hate, love one master or, and hate the other. But you can't serve two masters. Mm. Yes, true. You can't. Do you know what the word mammon means? Actually, it's a Babylonian word which, which means mima, which means, the definition of it means everything else. You can love everything else. Doesn't just mean money. Everything else. Look at the world today. They're loving everything. And Jesus Christ paid for them too. Yes, thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask you a question today. If our Lord rose from the dead and He dwells in you and me, are you willing for the stone to be rolled away? He's still rolling stones. Doesn't sound good. He's still rolling stones. <laughs> He'll roll the stone away from that grave. Take you out. Take off those grave clothes, that smelly, that stench from death. And he wants to bring life into that situation, into your life. I don't want to show up hands. I just want you to lift up your heart to the Lord right now. Because in, the mo in, a, in a short time, well, I want to minister to some people. And I want the prayer team up, pastors. And we want to minister to you. And I wrote to Greg last night, I said to him, that uh, if our spiritual tank is full, we should be ministering out of the overflow. And I'll tell you one thing, I've got overflow this week. <laughs> you know, I, every time I set my heart before I come to minister before the, in the house of the Lord, I want to make sure that I've heard, heard from God and I want to make sure that when you walk out of this place, you're going to walk out different yes. than when you came in. I don't want some benediction, have a good week, we'll see you next week, put the money in the coffers. I don't want that. I want to make sure that your needs are met. And they're not going to be met by Randy Kubitschek. They're going to be met by my Father who's in heaven, through His Son and by the power of His Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a resurrection life service today. That's what God wants to achieve today. That's His goal today is to bring resurrection back into the areas which are dead in your life, the things that are smelling, things that have no life, things that you think are buried and gone, and there's no chance of getting out of it, things where the stone is too heavy. Well, guess what? My God can remove all that stuff. Yeah. Amen. I remember we were in the garden tomb there in Israel, and it says when you go out of the thing, you're probably some of you all with me. It says, he's not, he is risen. And when I walked out, I said to the guy, to the curator, I said, where's the big stone? And he said to me, probably an angel picked it up and threw it in the sea. <laughs> I said, okay. You know what happens with us? We sort of like move it and it falls over and we keep on tripping over it, over the stone. Maybe we need to get that stone that's been blocking your way to get thrown right into the sea and be done with. Buried. Yeah, that needs right. to be buried. Yeah. The old things need to be buried once and for all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Resurrection Sunday. Just think. Jesus said, remember, remember me. Well, this is what we want to do this morning. We want to remember him, what he did for us, that we can have life and life in abundance. That's what he wants us for here on this earth, that we can be the salt and the light of this earth, that we can go out and show Jesus to people. Forget the religion. Forget all the good little things that you do. That's all great. But guess what? I invited somebody here today. Tina, are you here today? 
chicken shy. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> oh, Holy Spirit. I can feel right now there's an anointing, a yoke breaking anointing right now. But some of you people have been gone through some stuff in life. You've gone through hell and high water. Hi. You're trying to do everything in your own strength. That's where you fail because you've done it in your own strength. And God says enough is enough. I want my resurrection power to come into your life and start to change things and the good. All you've got to do is to, is, is to maintain of what I've given you, says the Lord. And I truly believe there's many today. And we don't have to have the show of hands or what it is, whatever the case is. But I want the altars to be open this morning. I want the prayer team to come up right now. I want Deb, I want you to please come up and bring the prayer team. And I don't know why I've got this song on my, on my heart. Waymaker. Promise keeper. Miracle worker. Light in the darkness. I want you to, you can sing that song. And I want, I want Pastor Greg and I want other, Pastor Kerry, he's not here. I want the prayer team to come up here. Standing here, and we're going to minister to you out of this overflow, this resurrection power that's within us to break the yoke of those areas of your life.